want to let you know something about what it means to present for a lot of people. I am sure that you have this uh, possible belief that you are going to eventually get to where you have like a lot of people on a regular basis. And you may be right, but it really goes up and down. I have seen personally, not only in my own career, but in the career of people far more, I don't know, celebritized than me, that the careers have this ebb and flow. And that's why I want to tell you, or at least explain to you why I give 100% to anyone who shows up. It doesn't matter if it's one. It doesn't matter if it's a lot. When you do a lot, when you're presenting in front of lots of people all the time, and by lots, I mean thousands each time, you know, like, I don't know, 1,500, 2,500, 4,000 people. You know, those, when, when you're at the, that level all the time, it feels really, really good to do something for a bunch, you know, for like, you know, 10, eight-year-olds. If, if you can do that, if, if, if what you do enables you to present in front of varied groups of people. So, if you perform in front of thousands or on TV, you know, when, here's the, here's the interesting thing, when you're, when you're, uh, when you're performing in front of, you know, when you're performing on TV for like, you know, millions of people, you're not performing for millions of people. Uh, sometimes you're on a sound stage with just a few people watching, and most of those people are crew. And most of those crew are focused on their specific component, specialized skill that is working, you know, maybe live or maybe in the recorded concept to capture what you're doing right. So they're not focused on, like, your presentation. You have to bring it to the camera just like this, right? Um, you've seen, you know, uh, you've seen televised presentations for, like, you know, uh, the Super Bowl, American football, right? Um, you know, something big like that. And in those situations, you're, you know, I haven't done that, but I've performed live in front of lots of people with a simulcast. And that is a special situation. But most of those like actors that you see doing things and they are reaching millions of people in movies and TV things and you know, streaming, whatever it is, they are on a sound stage to just a few people creating work in an enclosed environment and they reach lots of people, but they don't feel that. What they use is these skills that I offer here, right? This allows them to bring the live energy on a high level and it gives them the opportunity to be able to present in a way that the producers, the business people of that packaged product can disseminate that to lots and lots of people. So let's just go back to the idea of what it means to reach a lot of people. In order to reach a lot of people, you have to start by reaching, you know, in order to reach a lot, you have to start by reaching just a few. And here's my story. I was performing in Berlin. It was, uh, I've been in Berlin many, many times. And I was at this particular theater complex many times. So I can't remember if it was a 
three week run or a four week run or was it two months there? It doesn't matter, okay? Um, it was performing in a theater and when you have an extended run, like a month, if you're a popular show in Las Vegas, then you can have sold out things. But most of the shows in Las Vegas are not sold out every night. Just the big, big stuff. And those things cost so much money that they have to actually have a giant machine going to sell the big thing. And they only take the big stuff, right? So most of the time, if you're on an, in an extended run, you will have the weekends will be pretty full. And throughout the week, you will have a smaller amount of people. But you're doing your show every day. Same thing every day. It depends on how structured the improvisational aspects of it are, but if you have a dead-on, straightforward thing that you have to do, you have to bring it each day. And I was creating some very exhausting athletic, gymnastic, hour and 45 minute show with a, there's 15 minute intermission so it's it's 90 minutes of heavy duty athletic dance based improvisational comedy work with all sorts of gymnastics in it and it's exhausting and this was in the middle of a larger tour so we showed up, I don't know, it was a, maybe Mondays are off, so maybe it was a Tuesday. And our group was three guys. And our producer came in and said, there are four people today. That's all we sold. Just four people came today. And uh, they're ready to go in. What should we tell them? And the three of us talked and we weighed ideas back and forth and we agreed it would be a, it would be, you know, a unanimous decision or a, um, a majority rules decision because we hadn't had that experience before. And I was thinking of what I wanted to do and we were tired. You know, we were exhausted. Our bodies were exhausted. I had hurt myself a couple months before I was in pain and We weighed it back and forth quickly, you know, five minute conversation in order to give the producer, you know, the, the green light to do whichever thing. And the group as a whole, having weighed yes or no, do the show or send them home, said we're, we're enough, enough of us are exhausted and need the break and we'll take the extra day off and refund the four people, we're not doing a gig. So we canceled. It was the first time I had ever canceled a show that was scheduled to go on. It was the first time I had canceled something that I was prepared to do. Okay, so we put on our regular clothes. We changed out of our dance clothes and costumes and things. Packed up for the night. Walked over to the cafe bar where we get free beer and free dinner after our gigs. And there are some people. Not just the few people from the gig who, you know, they, they just got told the gig's canceled. So they walked over to the bar for, you know, a beer, a coffee, a water, whatever. And there we come strolling up into the same cafe. And our faces are on the placard all around the grounds of this theater complex. 
hard to miss us. Not only that, but we're speaking English. We're the, we're the Americans. And there are some people standing at the bar with each other, looking over every now and again. <coughs> and I knew that they knew who we were. I didn't know which ones of them had just gotten refunded. But they took time out of their day to prepare to go see a show. And then they are disappointed because we're canceling. And then we show up in the same place. And I went over to one of the other guys. And I said, I don't care if it's one person. I'm never canceling again. Ever. If it's one person, they sit front center and I'm going to do the biggest, best show I can for that one person. I'm never letting anyone convince me that canceling a gig is the right thing to do ever, ever again. I never did, ever again. And it has affected me doing this because I sometimes show up for a thing that I announce or I've been asked to do something for somebody else and I step in and one person shows up. Usually it's not just one. Maybe someone's late. Maybe some people are late. Ten minutes late, some people show up. But it's just one person and I welcome that person and I explain, this is fantastic. You're going to get a private class. And then I bring it. I just want you to know about that. When you first start whatever it is, you're going to have to go through the time where you're only getting a few before you can eventually get to a point where you're getting many. And there is a quality to getting many that feels really rewarding, but it's, it's different from the quality of giving a rewarding thing to the few. It's not better. It's not better. It's different. And you want to get used to how to deliver too many because that's valuable too. But you're not going to go from zero to many. You're going to go through the few. And when you get to a point of many, you're also going to sometimes show up and have just a few. And then, like I said earlier, you may encounter a situation where everything you're doing has to be just you and the camera. And maybe, maybe a crew if it's a, you know, broadcast of something. But often, you know, with me, with this stuff, this is just me. I know how to do this. I, even more than don't mind, I welcome and embrace that I know it's just going to be two, me and you. And that's what it takes. So don't let anybody
make you feel like you need to be disappointed if there's just one or two people, like you're in competition with someone. That guy showed up and right out of the gate had 200 people. Oh, really? Yeah. Big fucking deal. You can get... Some people can get 200 people on their first thing. They won't necessarily keep all 200. If you don't know what the fuck you're doing, and you don't know how to make it big, like make this thing that you do big, you're not going to keep that 200. You're just a used car salesman. You're a... You're not in competition. You are not in competition with those clowns. You can always get a bunch of people once. The key is to get them to come back. So, I just wanted you to know that. And I just wanted you to think about that. This is incremental. It has its ebb and flow. And it doesn't matter who shows up. Make them feel special. Give them every bit of your attention. Bring everything you got every fucking time. Okay?